Hello, this is Gail with Beaded Jewelry Diva, and today we are going to make this wire crochet with beads necklace. So it's a lot of fun. We've got the uh, end cones that I showed you how to make in that other video. And we're going to learn how to do all the wire crochets. We're going to finish it up, and uh, I think that you'll enjoy this project. If you do enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. So let's see what we need to in order to make this particular project. Here's what we're going to need for supplies. You will need some wire. I am using copper wire in 26 gauge. You will need some cone ends and I have a video on how to make these if you want to see how to do that. You'll need a clasp. Um, you will need a crochet hook. It, I'm using a US size 8 which is about a 5 millimeter but you can use any size you're comfortable with. Um, you will need a pair of round nose pliers. You will need a flush cutter. You'll need some 18 or 20 gauge wire. You just need a, a length of it. And then you will have your bead soup. So this is just a ton of different beads that uh, I've kind of put together as a soup. I even have seed beads in here, but um, you know, pick out whatever you like and just put it in the mix. So these are the supplies. Let's get started. You begin by stringing on beads onto your wire. So grab some of the 26 gauge wire and just pull out some. Leave it on the spool. Do not take it off the spool because you're going to have your beads on it. This is where you're going to pull it from. So you've got your wire and then just start picking up beads. Now if you have, you have a pearl that has a small, too small hold. Chuck it. Um, if you have a particular um, pattern in mind, by all means, go ahead and use it. In this particular case, all I'm doing is stringing on random beads. Um, I try, in general, to get the smaller beads um, to each end, only because they're going to be up, um, like up way against, uh, high against the back of your neck. And you may as well go ahead and use smaller beads there. But I've already strung on a bunch, as you see. So uh, now that I've got, let's see, how much have I got? I don't know. I've got about six or so inches um, strung. And let's go ahead and just add a few more. It is better to have too many beads on rather than not enough because it's more difficult to add beads after the fact than it is to already have them on your strand. And uh, that's just the way I look at it. Now as far as colors, you can do anything you want. I have mostly a blue, green, purple, more or less uh, color combination. Pick whatever bead you want to. Um, you know, bead soup is the way to go here. Okay, I've got my beads on. I've still, I'm on the spool, so now it's time to start our wire crochet. And I'm going back up to the beginning part of the wire. I'm going to leave about a six inch tail because I never know what I'm going to quite be doing with this end, so I would rather have uh, a little bit too much wire. Okay, I take my wire loop it around like this and then twist uh, pull it just a little bit but this is what it looks like just a twist this is going to be the start of my crochet i've got my um, crochet needle i'm going to put it through the loop then i'm going to put the wire over the crochet needle now if you um you know, if you're familiar with crochet, this is old hat to you, but for those of you who have never crocheted, what we're going to do is called a slip stitch. So lay your wire over, place it, get it under the hook, hold on to your uh, the tail and everything, and what you're going to do is just pull this through. So now you're joined on. Here's your, oops, here's your working end of your wire where all the beads are. So I'm going to take it again, lay it across, and then pull through. And 
and I'm doing it a little too tight right now. So one of the one of the things that I like to do is in the very beginning, I like to do a few stitches that are without beads so I can get used to the tension that I need to have. So lay it over, pull through, lay it over, pull through. And I'm going to do this for roughly two inches worth. And that's just my preference. Um, you could do it for, you know, an inch. You could do it for six inches. It's whatever you have in mind for your own necklace. So I've got just about two inches. And again, my preference, you could go more or less. Now that I've got those on, and you can see that it looks a little wonky. Now, especially if you're used to crocheting with thread and everything, this is going to look really weird. Rest assured, this looks the way it's supposed to. It's wire. It does not behave the same way that uh, thread does. All right. Now it's time to start introducing beads. I'm going to do one bead for my first, first time to show you. So I've got one bead on. I've got it slid down all the way down next to the last loop. Put my wire over and then pull through and my bead is caught on the wire. So I'm going to do one loop without beads and then I'm going to put two beads on. So I've strung two beads down to the wire and pull through. So one bead, two beads, a dozen beads, doesn't really matter. Um, you, you're just going to use the same process. Lay the bead next to the loop. Put your wire over the head of your crochet hook and pull through. Now be careful, the tension of this, you don't want to get this particular loop too tight because it's going to be difficult to pull through. Um, you can stretch it out a little bit if you need to, but try not to need to. <laughs> uh, this is 26 gauge wire. It could break, so you, you don't want to do that. All right, I'm going to put, uh, let's see, how about three beads on this time? Now, you can put the beads again one right after the other if you want to. Um, you can do several crochet stitches in between groups of beads. It's whatever you feel like doing. And you see that this one looks really wonky. Not to worry, um, it will end up actually looking pretty decent by the time we're all through. So I'm just going to do a, a few stitches without beads. And then bring some more down. I'll just bring a couple of these down. Now I'm going to go ahead and do this until the um, until I've got about... Oh, till I'm about at 16 inches. I want my brace or my necklace to be about 18 inches long altogether. And it, I want it, I want the chain totally to be about 18 inches. Um, I know I've still got the, the end caps and I've got the clasp and everything. But what we're going to be doing in the finishing steps is going to use up a little bit of the length of this wire. All right, I'm pretty much down to the, the nubbins in here. So I just got a few more loops to pull and then I will be done. And again, if you are having problems, if you made a loop too small, just go ahead, undo it slightly and redo it. But try not to, like I said, the the wire is a thin gauge and it could snap on you and although you can go ahead and put another wire on this join it it's not fun all right so we've got that um, I still have some beads left on the spool but that's okay I, I don't need them and I'll just leave them there for the time being until I decide that I'm not going to um, do another chain <laughs> so I've got this I'm going to slip my crochet hook off so it looks like this. I'm going to take my wire and put it through the loop. What I'm going to do is just snug this up 
so that it's not going to come undone. Now my wire is all wrapped around it, it's not going to come undone. All right, so I've made this. I remember I said that this was kind of wonky. It's wire. <laughs> Uh, you can you can place it wherever you want to. I'm going to make a few more of these. And when I come back, I will come back with them. Then we'll talk about how to end these. How to um, make your, your necklace all, all work together real nice. And put on the end caps. All that good sort of stuff. So give me a few minutes and I will be right back. I'm back and I actually ended up doing four different chains so I have four different strands now what I'm going to do is grab it by one end I'm going to take it and I'm going to twist okay I'm at the end I've got my wires all twisted together I've gotten rid of some of the excess wire trying on the end cap let's see how it looks so it looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist this up a little bit more because I want to make a twisted loop to use for my clasp. Time to put on the end cone. So we've got this. And we are going to go ahead and make a wrapped loop. So to make a wrap loop, and I'm going to get another pair of, of round nose pliers because the, um, the tool magic on this one's driving me crazy. <laughs> so here we go. I've got this. Bend it towards me. Wrap the loop around. Put it through. Kind of like that, and then just wrap around. And usually about three times we'll do it. Depends on how big of a neck you made. Now I, I made this rather small because I'm going to still use another jump ring through this. But I want to cut off all the extra ends. I came across something good for me to show you for troubleshooting. When I was twisting this wire, I twisted a little too much and this got cut off short. So you can see that these are a lot longer, this one's shorter. What can I do? What I will do is I will take this wire and I will just put it through some of the other wires. And then I will gently go ahead and wrap it around. We are almost done. I've got the jump ring on this end, so we're just going to put the jump ring on this other end, and then the clasp, and then some final bits of troubleshooting. So, let me get this together. So, jump ring all closed. I'm going to open my clasp just a little bit, just so I can have the jump ring go through easily and then I'm going to close it up again so that way this end is secure all right let's take a look at the necklace and you can see that gee the lengths aren't like aren't right so what should I do here's what you do and normally I do this before I join the ends but I think sometimes it's interesting to see how you can fix something like this after the fact. Here's what you do. You just take it, and I'll start from the middle usually. I'll find the longest length, kind of untangle it if it's a little on the tangled side. And I'll take that long length and just <laughs> wrap it around. So I'll take another length and wrap it around. So again, this is wire. This is very forgiving. If it looks like I've got a, a big bunch of junk here, wrap. I know a lot of people like to braid, and I've done a lot of braiding. But I also like to wrap it like this because, I don't know, I think it gives it a, a much more freeform shape. And it also 
makes it look more like a chain, I guess. Is I think that's the way I'm really trying to say it. It makes it look more like a chain. So I'll just go ahead and keep wrapping and twisting. And but you know, with the caveat that you want to be careful and not over twist um, and break the wires. So there we go, twisted. And I'll finish up this end in, in a little bit, but. Here's what I want you to see, the finished product. So I hope you've enjoyed this, and um, I hope you'll try your own wire crochet. If, if you've never crocheted before in your life, you may be intimidated, don't be. This is a lot of fun, and if you, again, if you want to follow a specific pattern, like maybe you want to do a rainbow so that you start with like purple here and then end up with yellow, by all means, go for it. Just do whatever your little heart desires basically <laughs> anyway if you've enjoyed this video i hope you'll give it a thumbs up um this is gail signing out saying have yourself a great day